Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. That's midday if you're in Australia or around 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. Smurfberry Barbecue, good to see you. Uh, remember guys, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch page. Uh, you can also join the Phil Does 3D Discord server by typing exclamation Discord in Twitch chat at any time or clicking on the blue graphic in my About Me panels on my Twitch page. So we're going to finish the sitting room. We're going we're to finish the sitting room today for the House on the Hollow game. Um, we're working on the sitting room that's in the Art Nouveau Art Deco building that's in that game. You can wishlist that game right now on Steam if you want. You can just type exclamation Steam in Twitch chat. Or again, go to the About Me section on my Twitch page and in the graphics in my panels, there's a, uh, a link to take you to the Steam store page. So, uh, as usual, if you have any questions while I work, feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If I can help in any way, I'm happy to try. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. And if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. So, Let's jump straight in, I guess. Um, we'll jump into the Unreal Engine. So we were working on our sitting room here. So we're going to continue doing that. Okay. Now, yesterday <laughs> we were deciding whether to put a painting or a mirror here and we decided on painting. But I'm thinking maybe a mirror here might look cool. So we might use the mirror for, for, for this paneling here on the wall. Let's see what it looks like anyway. So if I go into, I believe it's in here, yes. Let's take out the frame and it's absolutely massive. <sighs> Let's scale it back. Huge, that's right Smithbury, it is huge. Uh, we will make it smaller obviously because it's going on a, a section of the wall which is smaller. <laughs> <laughs> um, Smurf says end boss size that's right well you know we we, <laughs> we were sort of like deciding whether we wanted to use the mirror or the painting and some people like the mirror so I thought well let's use both because why not um, now I'm just trying to work out the size here for it uh, and it's better here too because it's a bit lower so You'll probably be, you know, it would be a usable mirror at this height. It was not a usable mirror way up there on the wall. Sniper Echo, evening, it's good to see you. Hope you're well, buddy. So yes, because we, we <laughs> half the people said they liked the mirror, the other half said that they liked the painting, we'll do both. Uh, Size-wise, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to work out the size here. It's not too bad. Let's bring the mirror in and have a look. Uh, so for the mirror, we're going to need... Now I've got to try and remember where I put everything here. Where did I put it? Decorative frames. I think this is the mirror here. It is, but again, it's massive. Let's scale it back. Android Lust, it's good to see you, buddy. I hope you're well. So yes, we, we couldn't decide whether we wanted the painting or the mirror, so we're going to have both. Because why not? Why settle for one when you can have both? Painting, <laughs> painting in the mirror. Well, that certainly would be different. A painting in the mirror. Um, what I want to do though, is I do want to uh, group both of these together so that they stay as one object. 
because we need to just rotate the painting a little bit because it's like hanging on a hook so it won't sit flat against the wall it'll sit at a little bit of an angle so let's do that uh, probably like that good so now we've got both why settle for one when you can have both, except a painting in the mirror? We, we, we don't have that. <laughs> Most ostentatious it is, isn't it? That, that is OTT, that, uh, that frame for sure. Oh, well, I mean, you know, if you're going to stick a big cross on your wall upside down like that, then an OTT frame is the least of your problems. Saving copy, Hellforge, it's good to see you, buddy. Thank you, Hellforge. There you go. If you want to join the Field Dust Discord server, click that link. Hellforge popped into chat. And if you do want to wishlist this game you see me working on, click on the link in Twitch chat to take you to the Steam Store page. Uh, I just want to explain to you guys what I've done here with this cross. Now, you remember how yesterday it was looking a little dark? We did bring up this light here, which is a duplicate of the candles to throw a bit more orange light up here. What I did this morning just before the stream is I added another light you can see that um, I've adjusted it so it throws light through this capsule. So not a traditional spotlight. It's more like a cathode ray light in that it, the light is coming from the <laughs> where that yellow uh, capsule is. So it throws light all the way up the cross. The other thing I did, though, was with that light, I only wanted it to affect the cross. So I've, uh, if you go into the light settings, I'll just point this out, you guys might already know it, but under lighting channels, you can set which channel the light affects. So I've set the light to channel one and I've set the cross to both channel one and channel two. So, sorry, channel zero and channel one. So channel zero is all the other lights in the room will affect it and channel one, just this light here will affect it just the cross so it won't it's not affecting light anywhere uh it's not affecting anything else in the room just the cross uh, what i've also done is i've turned off shadow casting on that that light because we don't need shadow casting i'm using it just to highlight the cross so i just wanted to explain that this morning so that's just so that the cross doesn't show up quite as dark as it was And thank you, Hellforge. There's my website link. So if you're new to my channel and you think, who is this guy and what's he all about? Uh, you can go to that builders3d.com. So my Twitch username with a .com on the end. And uh, read up on me if you really want to. And you can look at my gallery of work. And there's links to my social media, like my Twitter account and my YouTube and my art station and all that sort of jazz. So. Hellforge says, uh, hopefully you're all having a good morning. I'm having a good morning. I hope you are too. <laughs> Did you get some sleep? I know it's really early for, we, uh, for you, Hellforge. It's like, you know, what is it, three in the morning or something? I always appreciate it when you're in the chat because I know how late it is for you. Be right back, Smurf. No, probably. He's hungry. Smurf is hungry for food. <gasps> don't talk about food. You know, I have lunch after the stream. I don't do it before the stream. So I have to sit in and suffer in silence for you guys and have my lunch once I finish the stream. So I have a late lunch. Well, you know. 2 p.m. My time. Hellboard says, I haven't gotten any sleep since last time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm just going to cough for a minute. Sorry about that. You haven't gotten any sleep since the last time, whenever that was. Well, that's not good. You need sleep, Hellboard. You've got to be able to sleep. <laughs> Your body needs at least some sleep. Have a nap. Okay, so um, I'm just looking at our grouping here of the table with the mirror to make sure it doesn't look odd, and I think it looks okay. I've kept the mirror lower than the um, than the palms on the side. Again, that just helps to draw the eye down toward the table. So where is this one? We were doing uh, a V going this way. This is just like composition that I'm talking about. So where, where the eye is sort of takes you this way in an upward V. In this one, the eye takes you this way in a downward V, in a proper V. So, 
Yeah. Okay. Yes, well, <laughs> Android Lost says, wow, how much I know. Uh, you need to sleep, dude. Alforge says, I figured I should try to get some work done since I've been slacking the past few days, that uh, read weeks. So I sat down with Blender and now I'm seeing, and now all I'm seeing is this list of stuff I need to fix, which has got longer than my beard. <laughs> uh, it's a bit like that sometimes, isn't it? I've noticed um, while we've been working on this game, you guys know I used to work for a games company years ago. I went to work for an Archbis studio, which I still do. Uh, but I also now work for another games company again, doing this game with the uh, with the guys. And it can be a bit daunting sometimes when you sort of sit down and you plan everything out and you realise what what has to be done, what has been done, what still needs to be done, what has to be fixed. It's a massive job. And, yeah, I don't know. I, I've said to you guys before that because I get a lot of guys coming to my stream think, saying, oh, I want to make a, a sandbox game like GTA V or, or Cyberpunk or something, you know, a big open world sandbox game. Those are the most difficult games you can possibly imagine making. There is so much work that has to go into them, um, you know, from, from environment to scripting to AI to character. It's just a huge undertaking. Undertaking. Uh, so, yeah. People don't, I don't think, realise just how much work goes into making a game. It's just a huge amount of work. Huge. And it's never ending. Um, so, yeah. So we have to forgive CD Projekt Red for having de a few delays in the development of Cyberpunk because it's a massive undertaking. Really, really is. And that's why the GTA 5, well, GTA games, they take years and years to, to make and they have, like, you know... A thousand people at a time working on them. It's a massive, massive amount of work. More than people realise. <laughs> at least that's what I find. I think people think, they, they look at a game and they think, oh, how hard is it to make it? And it's really hard. <laughs> Trust me, it's really hard. There's a lot of work. Anyway, I don't want to put you guys off your, your grand vision of making a sandbox game. Of course you can do it. I'm just saying it's um, it's a lot of work. It really is. Euros, Euro, hey Euro, it's good to see you, buddy. Euro says, uh, Rockstar have a whole studio in Edin Edinburgh who literally only work on GTA. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. That, yeah, they, they, you know, they have teams of thousand people working on, on GTA and it takes them years. I mean, it's taken CD Projekt Red years to, to finish uh, Cyberpunk. So, yeah, it, it's a lot of work. And, and, uh, I think a lot of people play games and they don't actually understand or realise just how much work has gone into putting that game together. It's a massive amount of work. And and the sandbox open world games are the worst in that they're the most amount of work you, you need to do because they're just so huge. You've got to account for every, um, you know, in QA and testing, it's just a massive undertaking. It's full on, absolutely full on. Anyway, so uh, we want to put some stuff here on top of this bureau, I think. Because why not? Uh, Hellboard says, I used to think, wow, how hard is it to make a 3D model? <laughs> you just press some buttons. Now that I've done 3D for a couple of years, I'm ashamed of how ignorant I was. That's true too, but I don't want to put anyone off that wants to do 3D modeling because... The more you do it, the better you'll get at it and the faster you'll be. So, and it can be intimidating when you first start doing 3D modeling. You open up your 3D program, whether it's Maya or Max or Blender or Cinema 4D, and you look at the interface and you think, oh, shit, <laughs> where do I start? Um, but start slow and eventually you'll get better. But it's still a big undertaking to make 3D models as well. It's not, not just a one click, one button click and you're done. There's a lot of work goes into it. But you will get better and faster the more you do it. Euro says, I just make models, people pay me, life is good. <laughs> That's the way to go. Helford says to Android Lust and Smurf, uh, says hello, I think. <laughs> Euro says, 10 bazillion buttons, what do? That's right. Always remember, kiss, that's keep it simple, stupid. Uh, to start out simple, learn to crawl before you run. That's right. So that KISS philosophy is the way to go. 
Because, like, if we open up Max here, you can look at Max as in, we're going to start working on the kitchen actually next. That's why that's model, the fridge is loaded up. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you, you know, you go through Max's interface and you can think to yourself, wow, there's just so much to learn. Keep it simple, take it slow, and you'll be fine. And remember, less is more as well. So kiss and less is more. They're the two things that I live by. All right. Uh, I think up here, what we're going to do is we'll put a candle up here, but we've got, I want to use a candle that we haven't already used. So we've got this candle holder here and we've got these candle holders down here. There is a candle holder we have, which we used in the master bedroom, which the uh, statue of the angel is actually holding. We only used it there. So we can probably use that again. Uh, so if I go into the bedroom assets and it's this one here. Hellboard says, uh, I'm not saying it to put people off. Some of the best times I've had creatively the past few years have been doing 3D. For the first time in years, I'm actually excited to create again. It's just an overwhelming amount if you don't know where to start. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to put people off either. Don't think that 3D is hard and you can't do it. You can. Everyone can do 3D. It's just a matter of practice. That's all. You'll get better the more you do it. You'll get faster the more you do it. Uh, Euro says there, there's way more free guides and, and tutorials around now than what, when I learned a 3D model. Anyone learning these days has a huge advantage that way. That's incredibly true. If you go to YouTube, there are so many videos on just about everything you can possibly imagine. Every program, every, anything you might want to try and make. YouTube is a great resource. So that, and Twitch as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it, that's true. It's a lot easier these days than it was even when I started. So I, I sort of had to learn myself because yeah, um, I've always found it easier to learn via video tutorial as well than reading. Like reading books is very boring for me, like tutorial books. And I always found it easier to watch a video, watch somebody do it and then do it myself. Uh, so videos are a great way to learn. Hellforge says, thankfully the barrier to entry is at its lowest. Well, Blender is completely free. There's no excuse not to do 3D. Oh, the Unreal Engine you see me using here, it's completely free. I mean, you know, if you make over a million dollars with whatever you make using the engine, well, then you've got to give a percentage of the profit to Epic Games. Um, if you never make any, if you never sell anything, you can use the engine completely for free and you can use it for free until you make over a million dollars. So it's a pretty good deal, really. And so for free software, it's incredibly powerful as well, this game engine. It really is. Uh, Euro says, yeah, Hellforge, uh, when I learned it was like sorcery. <laughs> Hellforge says, everyone can do 3D. You just have to figure out what you want to do in 3D. That was the hard part for me. No problem. He's going to be right back in a minute, Hellforge. And not paying Epic. Um, Making one million and not paying Epic. Well, that's right. It used to be lower, but uh, Epic Games re not that long ago changed the licensing agreements with uh, the, the Unreal Engine here. So you don't pay any royalties to Epic Games unless they've changed it again. I don't believe they have. Unless you earn over a million dollars in sales with whatever you're, us whatever you're selling make using the engine, uh, which is a great deal because the engine has had decades of development put into it, the Unreal Engine. Uh, Epic have done a really good job. The artist tools are second to none. It's, it's one of the nicest engines I have used. Now, Epic are not paying me to say this, it's the truth, and I've used a lot of game engines. Uh, look, I haven't used Unity. I've heard good things about Unity as well. Um, but I certainly have used Unreal here, and it's, it's really, really nice to work with. And I've used some dogs. The guys will tell you. Ask Android Lust how much I used to bitch about Gamebryo. Uh, Gamebryo was a game engine that no longer exists. Um, I've, I've used that in the past and it was a real dog to use. It's terrible. Uh, Hellforge says, speaking of uh, Unreal Engine, the new monthly free stuff is on the market. I'll have to check that out. I always like to check out the new free stuff. We all love free. Anything for free, I want. I want it. Whether I'll use it or not, I want it. <laughs> Add it to my account just in case in the future I need it. So I'll check that out after the stream. Uh, Euro says, I like Unity, but C 
sharp is my bay. Uh, plus most of my clients use Unity. Yeah, look, Unity, I've heard good things about Unity. Like, I can't speak from experience because I haven't used it. But I do hear good things about it, and I've seen games made using it, and it does look very nice. So the games that are made using it look really cool, so I'm sure it's another good engine to use. I don't know what their licensing model is, though, as far as payments go. Android Lust says, I think you hated Gamebryo more than being a chef. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. You know how much you know how much I've been bitching about Gamebryo. I hate that engine so much. I'm so glad it doesn't exist anymore. It was so bad to use. I was traumatized using that engine. Again, the, one of the game studios I worked for. I was traumatized having to being forced to use that thing. It was terrible. Uh, and of course, that's the engine that um, Skyrim is actually built on. Bethesda call it something else now, but uh, it's actually based on Gamebryo. I'm getting emails coming through on my phone, I think. But yeah, it's based on Gamebryo, so maybe they've, they've changed it. It's from Steam, okay. Maybe they've improved it, but man, it was a dog when I was using it, so. And it doesn't exist, so, yeah. Euro says, not just games, apps too. I wrote an audio visualizer in three days, all because someone said it could not be done in C Sharp. <laughs> Uh, I'm not really great with um, C Sharp or C++. I mean, I'm pretty good with scripting languages, but not those programming languages. They're, I've not had enough. I've not done enough work with them. A friend of mine's very good with them, but I'm I'm not not so good with C Sharp or C++. Which is why I really love the uh, Blueprint system here in Unreal because it makes programming and scripting stuff so simple, <laughs> mega super simple. Uh, but you're never going to get performance that you get from actually writing native code like C Sharp. So, so I'm impressed, Euro, that you can do C Sharp. Euro says, "Yeah, it's one of the uh, it's one of the more you <laughs> it's one of the more you do, you know." Yeah. No, it's certainly a good language to to uh, to know. It's used everywhere in everything. C Sharp and C plus plus. No, .NET as well, but. So yeah, we have this candle holder, which is just a different type, because why not? So we're not repeating the same object too often. We'll reuse this because we really only used it in the bedroom for the angel at the base of the bed. So I'm just going to rotate this around so we can see the handle. And I'm going to rotate it around because it's at an angle. We don't want that. It's at an angle because the uh, angel statue is holding it at an angle. And it was created for her. So. Might just move the light a little bit. And pull it up just a touch. And I might actually make it a little bigger. Make it a bit more of a statement in this room. Oh, let me undo that. I don't think I did a uniform scale there. It also just helps to throw a bit more light in this corner over here. back okay and I think uh, the other thing we'll put up here we'll put some old books in this room it is a sitting room so it's a place where you go to read so why not uh, Euro says C sharp is basically .NET Smurf says I return hey Smurfberry welcome back you got your food I'm so jealous I'm starving <laughs> Alfred says I can't type. Euro says you're lucky I can't type on a good day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think a, a couple of books up here would be cool. So let's uh, jump into where we've got our books, which I believe will be 
in the merge folder. Um, let's bring in, let's bring these ones in. Again, we're going to scale them up. Rotate them around. I really need to turn angle snap on here so I get proper rotations going on. Let's move them down toward the candle. I'm just looking at scale here. I want to make sure the scale of my books is correct. I think it's okay. And let's also bring in uh, this little pile here. I'm going to copy the scale from this one. And let's rotate it around. I guess it's got to go that way. So we'll pull that in there and we'll move those over there and we'll move these down here. Uh, let's move all of these along a little bit so I can separate these a little bit more. Make sure they're not inside my table, they're not. And I might just move this over a touch. And I might rotate it around so the handle sort of faces out that way. going to turn game mode on so I can get rid of my icons. We can get a better look at what's going on. Yuri says, you're lucky I can't have a good day, Android. Uh, Yuri says, I should put Hitchhiker's Guide in there someplace. <laughs> uh, Hellboard says, since you got an inverted cross, would, will you put the Book of Heavenly Metal in there as well? <sighs> we have some interesting books up in the bedroom, in the bookcase in the bedroom, that you actually pick up and use as part of, uh, part of an interactive sort of puzzle thingy. Uh, they've got some funny names like Angelic uh, Communication Oil and all that sort of jazz. And Smurberry made a suggestion, which I actually haven't put in yet. I must remember to do it before the game is released, uh, of um, how to escape the hollow for, for dunces. Like, you know, for a dummies book, but I don't want to use for dummies in case there's a copyright on it. I thought that was a good idea. Uh, I have actually created the, the book title. I just haven't put it in the game yet. I might just non-uniform scale this in a little bit. So I can just bring this over a little bit. Uh, and bring the candle over just a little bit more. I just see, I need to make sure the candle, whoops, I moved it by mistake, uh, isn't actually intersecting the palm like that. Because that looks a bit strange. The candle will be burning the leaves. Um, it's just trying to get it to fit in there with everything else that's on this table. Uh, perhaps if I move it forward. Yeah, that's better. It doesn't have to be in a direct line anyway. It's probably better it's not in a direct line with the books. It's more interesting. Um... Same probably goes. We might move these forward a little bit. 
This makes the grouping a bit more interesting. Uh, and the candlelight hitting the moving palm leaves looks more interesting as well, so. Okay. So, do I want to add anything else to this room? I uh, don't know that we really can. Actually, there was one thing I think I wanted to bring in. Hellboard says, uh, the lusty Argonian maid, Skyrim crossover. I get sued by Bethesda, I'm sure particularly after me disparaging their game engine. I'm sure they don't love me. <laughs> um, uh, and Helpwood says, I'm a man of refined literary, li literary taste. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's just one more thing we might bring in. Uh, now, it's up in the master bedroom. And I I'm thinking about putting it in this back corner. So I'm going to have to, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick save because we haven't done a save. So let's do that. And once it's saved out, we'll jump up to the master bedroom because there is an object up there I need to move. I'm, I'm probably going to have to throw the B-Road back screen up at around 1.30 this afternoon, only for a minute. I'll, I'll just let you guys know later. It's, so it'll only be up for a minute. It's got to do something at around 1.30. Uh, I'll, I'll only be a minute and then I'll be back. So let's go to the master bedroom. And it's actually in this corner over here. So I'm going to have to turn the master bedroom on. Uh, this thing, th this plinth here with the um, plant. Now it looks really cool in this corner, but when you're actually playing the game and you open these doors, the doors actually intersect the um, the pedestal and so do these doors when you open up the bookcase they actually open up inside into the into the uh, pot pot here which doesn't look great now now the it we don't really need this here it, it does look cool but i can't move it forward because then the doors intersect it too much i can't move it back because then the um the doors from the bookcase intersect it when you open them up so it really has to be removed from this room and we haven't used it anywhere else. So we put a lot of work into texturing it up, so we might as well use it. So we're going to move it. It's all good. Take as much time as you need. Cool. You'll, I'll only be gone a minute. My b rights back screen will be up and it'll be 30, you know, 30, 30, 30 to 60 seconds. I won't be gone long. Just have some coffee, yes, that's right, let's have some coffee. Eurus says, my iPhone died yesterday, updated it to iOS 14.2 last night and it won't charge now. Ordered an iFixit kit to replace the charge port. Oh, yeah, I, I don't buy iPhones anymore, Apple products anymore, I used to. Uh, I buy Android now. Pretty much Samsung. But that, that's pretty bad it, that it died and you updated it and now it won't charge. What's going on with the iPhone? Uh, so let's remove, let's move this um, pedestal. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it from the bedroom into the persistent level. So now I can turn the bedroom off. And let's move it downstairs. See, I can go through the building now and they won't scream at me because I'm showing you stuff I shouldn't be showing you. Everything's hidden. Because they really were getting quite annoyed with me when I was streaming, uh, showing you guys parts of the building that I really shouldn't be. After them telling me repeatedly, make sure you stay in the room you're working in. Ah, but I do what I want. <laughs> no, they, they were really getting narky about it. I'm just going to turn our unlit mode on here so we can get a better look at what's going on. Now, I thought this might look cool in this corner over here. I could be wrong. Let's see. I just want to make sure it's actually done on the ground.
and let's make sure it's not intersecting anything it shouldn't be. We'll probably pull it down just a little bit more into the corner. Uh, I may just rotate this plant around a little bit. That's better. And let's go back into lit mode so I can see what it looks like. Uh, I like it too because it adds a bit of movement. This plant is actually a speed tree plant, so it does move in the wind. It should. We'll wait here for a minute and make sure it does. Um, yeah, Euro says you need to wait. Uh, Euro says those Fs might be preemptive. If the new charge port works, it'll be good. Just need to wait on shipping now. Android Lost says I never had a phone where the uh, charge port stops working. No, I haven't either, but I can understand why it would. Because if you're plugging in and unplugging constantly, then I guess over time it's going to wear out. It's going to cause some sort of damage to the port because you're constantly plugging it and unplugging it. Um, my current Samsung Android phone unfortunately doesn't do wireless charging. My older Android, Sam, uh, Android Google phone does though, so that's always a good option if, you, if you've got a phone with wireless charging. Uh, that way you won't damage the charging port because you're not plugging in and unplugging all the time. You just put it on the charger or lay it on the charger. But my, uh, my Samsung Android phone doesn't have wireless charging, unfortunately. And I miss it. It was just so easy to, you know, drop it on one of those wireless chargers to charge it up and without having to plug in and unplug. Hellport says, I guess they simply refined what charging means. You thought it was the charging batteries, but Apple mean, but uh, Apple's mean charging you for a new phone and repair. <laughs> That's clever. Euro says, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's apparently pretty common. I hope it's just coincidence. It died after installing iOS 14.2. We'll find out when I repair it. Copy while waiting. Good, good point. Uh, but we see here that the plant does move. But it doesn't move all the time, just occasionally when there's a gust of wind in the room. So it's, um, it just helps to add a bit of movement in that corner there and we haven't broken our rule here where we want that V that inverted V so it's all good so I don't know that this room actually needs any more uh, I don't think we can fit anything more in here so what we need to do now is we need to add the uh, reflection captures Euro says, uh, for what it's worth, uh, I wouldn't pay Apple to waste my money on a repair. Their support is renowned for being sucky regarding hardware faults. Uh, their ethos is replace rather than repair. Well, that's the reason that the world, you know, we're, we're going through our resources in the world for no reason. People, we waste resources in, in the world. People upgrade their computers, they throw out their old graphics cards, you know, their old phones. We're a culture that's, in, you know, encouraged to buy new stuff constantly. Well, that's the way the, the economy of the world works, unfortunately. They have to convince us we need the new stuff and we need to buy the new stuff. And I'm guilty of it too, because I want the new stuff as well. Uh, but it's not good for the environment or for the world, for the world's resources. This throwaway culture we have now, where we just replace, 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 don't repair, replace. Um, yeah. I mean, when I had my iPhone, which was like, you know, a long time ago now, uh, I, I, it was a good phone. I'm not, not saying it was a bad phone. Um, but I'm, I'm more happy with Android now. Not that I like uh, supporting Google in any way, shape or form because they're an evil company like all the rest now. Uh, Euro says I fixed a monitor for a few quid. Yeah, I did too. Actually, I had to replace capacitors. Not not in these monitors, but one of my old ones. Uh, I had I had a couple of new Sonic monitors, and they uh, lost picture. And it was basically the caps, the capacitors needed to be uh, replaced in them. So I, re I had to replace a couple of those, and it was an experience. I don't normally do a lot of soldering work, uh, but I did. I managed it. It was cool. 
felt proud of myself after I managed to do it. <laughs> so it's good that uh, you fixed the monitor for a few quid, replaced the Cherry Max Cherry MX key the other day for a few quid versus hundreds of pounds for new hardware. Well, that's just it. Most people would just throw it away and get a new one, and it's a waste. It's a waste. It's bad for the environment. It's, it's you know, you, you, you're wasting money by doing it. But that's the, the culture that we're in, encouraged. That's how we're encouraged to behave. To keep the, you know, the, the machine rolling along, the capitalist machine rolling along. Anyway, so if you can do it yourself and repair something, it's always the best way to go. You'll save money, you'll save the environment, you'll save resources for the planet. It's just a better way to go. Not to mention throwing out electronics and how terrible that is for the environment in itself, you know what I mean? All for, people, all for countries where they actually take electronics apart, very poor countries, where they actually get old electronics and they pull out the copper wiring and they, you know, you know they, they, they remove bits and pieces and it's really carcinogenic when they burn the, the parts to actually dismantle it. And it's not good all around. It's really not. Euro says, need a circular economy for electronic goods where everything gets recycled. Yes, I don't, we don't seem to work that way though. Yeah. Well, a good example is actually my dishwasher broke the other day <laughs> and it's too old to be repaired, unfortunately. It's like uh, 15 years old. So it needs to be, uh, unfortunately, has, has to be completely replaced. I did try to see if we, it could be repaired, but it can't be. But I mean, you know, I got 15 years use out of it, so it's not bad. And trust me, that thing's on twice a day. Uh, I like to get a fresh glass and a fresh cup and a fresh plate for everything that I consume. So, but I did try to get it repaired. It just it's too old though. Uh, Android Doss says I usually just hope my stuff doesn't break. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> um, Euro says fifteen years is good for a dishwasher. Yeah, it is fifteen years for constant use. Uh, like I said, twice a day usually. Sometimes uh, it, it's not bad. It, I got good use out of it, but I still did try to get it repaired. But it's just you can't buy the parts. It's too old. And I keep all of my old electronics. You guys, I've told you guys, I have all my old video, NVIDIA graphics cards and boxes up in my closet. You know, the 8600 and I can't remember the names of them all now, but I've got, I must have like five or six old graphics cards in their original boxes up in my closet because I just can't throw them away. Can't throw out electronics. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, so we need to uh, bring some reflection captures in. Let's do that. We're going to start with a, uh, whoops. <laughs> we're going to start with uh, a box reflection capture for the entire room, and then we're going to bring in a spherical reflection captures for certain spots in the room. Euros is they usually put old working appliances uh, to a local group who test them and then give them to people who are less fortunate. That's a great thing to do, and that's probably something I should do as well. Although I don't know who'd really want to use an old 8600 NVIDIA graphics card. It's sentimental value for me. I don't think it, 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 it'd be so slow by today's standards. But you never know. Yeah. But I try not to throw anything out. All my old computers, if I upgrade my computer, I try and repurpose the old computer for something else, whether it's a media machine or a Linux box or something. You know what I mean? Not just toss it on the side of the road sort of thing. There's always a use for your old PCs or your old computer parts in some way, shape or form. Usually. Uh, Euro says, for unrepairable stuff, but uneconomical to repair, I just recycle with those with the council. Yeah. Uh, Helpwood says, aren't there museums that, that does occasional tech exhibits? Yeah, there are. There are museums that take old technology, really old stuff that's hard to come by now. For sure. So I guess in 20 years' time, my old NVIDIA 8600 might be might be antique enough to be <laughs> put in a museum somewhere. Because graphics cards, they change so quickly. Every year or two, there's a new graphics card, or pretty much every year now. Uh, and the performance just between the older generations to the newer ones is incredibly better. So. Euro says, we have a wireless museum here that's full of old radios and telephones. We have one here in Melbourne as well. Uh, not not just telephones and radios. It's older technology. It's a, a museum called Science Works. 
on the other side of the city from where I live. They have like a section that has all older technology. Okay, so let us find our reflection box reflection capture. What's going on here? 100, 100, 100. There we go. So at least I can see it now. Let me get up so we can get a good overview of a room. So the box reflection capture is just going to be used for the overall wood in the game. Why do you do that? There we go. So I guess we should try and position it around about the middle of the room. And let's scale it up. I want to try and avoid going into the uh, hallway or outside the building. I think we should be okay. Might just move it over a little bit, I think. It can be difficult to see these box reflection capture because uh, I keep seeing that box there, that yellow box that you can see in the corner, the line. That's actually um, that's uh, an audio volume box. So that's basically so that when you enter this room, the audio one I'm talking about you see here. Uh, it, 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 because when you're in, inside the building, we have music playing, like uh, it, it randomly changes between, I think, four or five different music tracks. But because there are audio cues in here for puzzles, we needed a way to have the music volume go much lower. So when you're in this room, you can hear the other audio cues. So it's uh, that that's what that yellow box is for. It, 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 it makes the music... Uh, less loud when you're in this room and it gradually fades out to getting a bit louder as you leave the room and again I'm just I'm trying to find out I'm trying to find the extents of this there it is this um, reflection capture box I'm getting it to go just inside the wall and we want to bring it over and scale it up so it's just inside the wall there and just inside the wall there it's all good Might just scale it out a little bit more this way. And now we just have to work on the height. Let's bring it up so I can see it. Again, I'm up, just so I can get the height correct, I'm going to just move it out of position for a minute. So I can see it. So it's 
that one there. Scale it up. It needs to come up a little bit more. Gotta try and get into a corner of the room where I can see everything. Okay, we should be good. So now I can just move it back over again, back into position. Okay, I think we're good. Hellboard says, Phil, have you done much work with modular environment pieces? Mod well, this, this building actually uses a... Well, it depends on what you mean by modular. Um, I, I consider modular reusable. So you reuse the same piece of geometry again and again. Is that, is that what you mean? If that's what you mean, then we've done that in this room, in this building. Um, I can sort of give you an example, maybe. Might not be in this level, no. Um, if I turn this on. Yeah, you see that these columns and these pieces around the window. They're reused over and over again in every window frame. So I consider that sort of thing modular. In which case, yes, we do actually do that in this building. Uh, Helpwood says, yeah, that's what I've heard. It mean, yeah, yeah, I, so yeah, I do. We do, we have used modular pieces in this building. Uh, it's always best to do that if you can, because you can reuse the same piece of geometry. So you save on um, mesh memory, you save on texture memory, and it also means you can instance the objects so it speeds the game engine up. So you're reducing your draw calls, you're reducing your memory footprint, you're reducing your memory footprint for the uh, mesh, and the game engine is faster because it's instancing the same object, so it can draw it much more quickly. So yep, modular instancing is the way to go, if, uh, so it's always good to plan out that way. For sure. Okay, so now we want to bring in some spherical reflection captures just to, to highlight certain areas. So, so let's get this sphere reflection capture here. Let's bring it in because 3000 is way too big. Oh, it's, it's really sensitive this um let's try 200 200 might be okay so i'm going to place one up near the cross here <coughs> pardon me uh, i'm going to duplicate that again and bring one down for in front of the mirror that's down here What else? What else? I'm going to duplicate it again. These these don't reflection captures in the engine are really like cheap to use. They don't sort of slow the engine down very much. Uh, even though we are using, you can turn real time ray tracing on in this game. Uh, even then, reflection captures are useful because they act as like an optimization for the uh, ray tracing. So you don't have to have as many levels of reflection. You can sort of, it, it falls back to using a reflection capture. So even if you're going to be using ray tracing in your game, you should still use reflection captures. Uh, and of course, if you're not using ray tracing, you have a graphics card maybe that doesn't have ray tracing, you can still play the game and get reflections by using your reflection capture. Um, 
Oh, I moved it. Didn't mean to. I do that all the time. I might just make this one a little bit bigger. So let's go. Let's throw 300. And we'll pull it up a bit. Pull it back a bit. So I might move this one here, bring it in a little bit, back to 200, uh, and I'll duplicate it again for the mirror. Now it's interesting, uh, 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 if you look at the mirror, I don't know, it might be a little bit difficult to see on stream, but you see how the doorway here, you can see the doorway, which is that frame there. This is one of the one of the problems with reflection captures. Uh, you see the door is missing. So we have the angel over there. We can see the doorway, but there are no doors. And that's because reflection captures can't reflect anything that's a moving object. And the doors obviously are moving physics objects because you need to open and close them. Um, and that's one of the benefits of ray tracing because in ray tracing, uh, it can actually reflect um, movable objects. So just be aware of that, that you, you won't see anything movable in the reflection capture unless you're using ray tracing. Uh, Helpful says, cool, I've been thinking about putting together a modular environment kit. Sounds like a cool thing to learn and use. Yep, it sounds like a good idea. Helpful says, and it gives me a practical example of how to learn the material node stuff in Unreal. Smurfberry says, all the more reason to have a painting in the mirror. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just, just be aware of that. Reflection captures will not reflect movable, moving objects. Uh, the same goes for move, moving particle systems, it won't reflect them either. Whereas ray tracing will. Uh, whoop. Oh, wish I'd, but most players are probably not going to notice that. Uh, they'll notice it if they look and they see the mirror here, but most, most people when they're playing the game probably won't notice. Uh, and of course if you turn ray tracing on, well then you'll get your proper reflection anyway. So I think we just need probably one more reflection over here around the uh, the chest of drawers and the candelabra. So let's duplicate this again. And let's move it over here. Maybe around about there. I might bring this one down a little bit. Uh, the only other place I think we might put one is down here on the actual floor. Just so that the reflection we get from the fire here in the fireplace is uh, accurate. So let's duplicate it one more time. Bring it down, bring it over, bring it down. Might bring it in a little bit. I think we should be good. Uh, so let's do a quick save and then I'm going to do a rebuild on the reflection captures. <laughs> oh, I've got a sore back. I must have slept funny. <laughs> right between my shoulder blades I've got a sore. <laughs> Okay, let's rebuild the reflection captures. OK, 
Come on, you can do it. And do we want to, do you want me to play in editor so you guys can get a better idea of what it looks like? Is that going to be a yes or a no? So you can see we got a reflection happening in the mirror here. Yes, Android Lust says. Okay, let's do that. Now, just before I do a play in editor though, I'm going to do a save again now that reflection captures have been built. Yes, please, Hellford says. Okay, we'll be doing that. I won't be interacting with anything because I don't want to set off any music cues and puzzle pieces, things. I don't want to spoil anything uh, for anyone that wants to play the game, but I'll play in editor so we can get a bit of a look at what's going on. Let me just make sure I'm sort of not, not near anything that's going to set off the, the inventory system. Okay. So you see now here, you can see the door. That's because ray tracing is turned on in the editor here. might need to do something about the ground here. It's a little bit dark. And Hellford says, and the, uh, and the turn off the, the lettuce soup thingy, I don't recall what it's called afterwards. Oh, oh DL, DSLL, DLSS, you can see it down in the corner there. Yes, I'll turn it off afterwards. Lettuce soup. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at this corner here. It might be a little bit dark. I'm also looking at this mirror. I can see those. I can see the rug. Okay, I'm just wondering whether I need to do something to make uh, that more noticeable in the mirror. Not sure. Yuri says character is vampire, no reflection. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering why. There is no reflection happening there. Like we have a reflection here. You can see the character there. But I don't understand why I can't see myself in this one. It may be that I've used the wrong material on that mirror. Uh, you're only going to see a reflection of the character, of course, with ray tracing. But I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether I don't have ray tracing turned on for that material. Because you can turn ray tracing on and off on a mater per material basis. Um, so I might just check that. But aside from that, I'm just making sure that everything else looks correct. We are a little bit dark up through here as well. I mean, I, I want it dark, I want it moody, but I'm just wondering if um, I should bring the lighting up a little bit. Yeah, we might do that. So let's have a look at this light here. Uh, let's go to a 600 attenuation radius. And let's bring it up the intensity. Let's try 20.
And I still think that's, that corner down there is too dark. So what I might do is I might bring one of these candles over. I think. So just so we can highlight that um, chest, of, chest of drawers a little bit better. Just make sure it's sort of over here out of the way so the player doesn't sort of stand on it. That's better. We can see here now. Um, yeah, my only other concern, it might be a little dark through here. Which would make sense because there's lighting here and there's no lights on the wall over here. Um, so it is sort of like accurate, but I'm just... Let's play in the editor again. Let me check it. Always drives me nuts. That's why I sort of try and get the camera away from that that sparking thing. The noise, yeah, drives me nuts. Like the the lighting over here is okay. It's just in this corner. Let's check that. What's going on there? That's a shadow from the palm, I think. No, it's just that corner there. Let, let me just, um, let's go into unlit mode. I want to have a proper look at the room. really a lot I can do about putting a light in that corner. We may have to fake it. So I was originally thinking maybe we could use one of these sconces to actually put over here to get some more light going in this corner. Um, but I really don't think a sconce is going to fit here properly. It's going to look odd. Uh, so what we might need to do is we may, may need to fake it. Let's go back into lip mode. Hmm. I just want to work out what's going on with this shadow as well. I'm pretty sure it's the palm. I'm just wondering why the shadow is not moving. Uh, let me check the light. It's a static light. We're going to change that to a movable light. No, it's still not the cause. All right, we'll change it back to static. It must be one of these lights up here. This set to movable, it shouldn't be a problem. This one, this set to movable. I'm just going to hold the camera here because I want to see if these shadows move at all. To try and work out what's going on. One problem at a time. They definitely don't look like they're moving. Um, 
I don't know that every branch on this palm does actually move though. It's really weird. I've not actually run into this problem before. I'm just going to temporarily move. Yeah, it's actually this light. Something to do with this light. Um, what I might do is... I'm going to turn cast shadow off on that light. I don't know that it adds any really that much to the corner and to the room anyway. And of course turning off casting a shadow will actually improve the performance of the light. So we might do that. We might just keep the shadow casting off on that light in the corner. It's, it, the, the shadow is cast in the corner, it's not really noticeable anyway. And we get the improved performance by having uh, shadow casting turned off. Um, the only other thing now is this, this corner up here is a bit dark. So what I might do is I might duplicate this light so we can fake it. Android Lost says that light seemed to be casting a weird shadow too, even if it wasn't moving. Which light are we talking about, Android Lost? Are you talking about that one over there, the candle? Or are you talking about the one here that I'm, I'm playing with now? Uh, I'm going to bring this in to say 300. No, 300 might be a bit too much. Or well, the candle, yeah. I agree. So well, I'm going to use this slide as like a... A fill light, I guess you could call it more than anything else. So I'm going to use it like a fill light just to bring up that dark corner. You want the, oh yeah, yeah, I, I don't think we need the shadow there. It's not, it's not, it doesn't add anything. It throws the shadow in that corner on the wall, which is probably not going to be noticed by the player and, and turning the shadow off improves the performance of that light. So it was better that we turned it off. Uh, I might just see if we can pull back on that a little bit. And I'm just going to play in the editor again. That's better. So the, the, the corner is not quite so dark. We can actually see up there. Uh, the other thing I've got to work out is why the reflection is not happening of the player character there. Yeah, so I don't think we, we miss anything by not having the shadow cast there on the back wall. We still get the nice um, lighting playing on the palm leaves. Uh, we have the reflection happening here for our player in that mirror but not this one so let's work out what's going on there so just before i do that i'm going to do a save all again because you can never be too careful And let's see, let's see what is going on here. I'm going to check the material on this mirror. Pull it in so you guys can see it. We have um, ray tracing turned on, so that shouldn't be the problem. I'm also just going to check the... Uh, I'm just going to move this off screen while I move into my viewport here. Uh, I'm going to check this mirror as well. Okay, so again, we've got ray tracing turned on. So that's not the issue. Uh, ray tracing is on. I'm just trying to see if there are any differences between these materials. Serpent translucent default lit surface, opaque default lit. Okay, that's probably the reason then. We need to, I think, make this one translucent.
Uh, no, there's something strange going on. Hang on, let me try and work out what, what it is. Service translucency volume, and we don't want volumetric, we want surface translucency volume. I'm just waiting for the uh, engine to catch up here and render out the sphere so I can see. Sniper girl, it's good to see you. And copy Hopwood says, yes, uh, hi Sniper girl, good to see you. Uh, see, I'm just wondering why it's not uh, rendering out my viewport here. Surface translucent default lit surface translucency volume. There we go. Surface translucent default lit surface translucency volume. Let's just save that material and we will test to see if our character is being reflected now in the mirror. You just got done from work sniper girl? I'm doing really well. It's good to see you too. Always nice when you finish work for the day, isn't it? Okay, so we decided to bring the mirror back, Sniper Girl. Remember yesterday we were deciding between the painting and the mirror? Well, we thought, why not have both? Uh, I'm just going to play in the editor now. I want to test that mirror. Oh, now, now we can see our character there. Can you see him? He's right there. It might be difficult for you guys to see on the cam on stream. Maybe if I move back and forward. He's being shown now, right there. Right in, right there, in the middle. Is our character. Of course, he's easier to see here, but um, where am I? There. You can see his blue hat. And if you, if you look at this one, you can sort of see his blue hat just there, around the middle. So that's better. Now we're getting a proper reflection too of, uh, of this object here, which I wanted to see. The whole point of putting this mirror here was to get a good reflection of that. Right there. So that's better. Okay, so we picked up the darkness from that corner. We got rid of that weird shadow that was going on in that corner and we brought up that corner a little bit because it was a little bit dark. I think this room could probably be called done. I don't think there's anything else I really need to do in here now. Oh, just let me um, get rid of that window so I can see my chat. Sniper Girl says, especially when it's a, a BS factory job that you hate, always good to get away from it. Uh, Andrew Dust says, yeah, I see the character. Cool. Upwood says, good job, ship it. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, whenever this COVID crap is done, going to be applying for art jobs again, trying to avoid potentially having to relocate during it due to the state of the US. Well, those vaccines, they're due to come out soon-ish. You know, there's those three vaccines that they've been talking about. Um, so once they get those rolled out, then things should start to head back to a bit, bit, a bit of normalcy, hopefully. So they reckon by the middle of next year, they should have enough vaccines for everyone to start getting vaccinated. <laughs> now, having said that, I'm not going to get vaccinated immediately. I will get a vaccination shot. Uh, I just want, I, I want to make sure that they've tested it properly. Uh, call me paranoid. Uh, so I will get a shot, but not, I won't be, I won't have my hand up for the very first shot. I'll wait, you know, a few weeks to see how things go. But it's important to get vaccinated, uh, otherwise it won't work. Everyone needs to be vaccinated. So. you got to get that herd immunity thing happening. Snappy Girl says, yeah, middle of next year, we'll have the gas station done by then. Also agree, not going in for the first, first batch. Yeah, no, I, I won't do the first batch, but I will get it. I, I will have the jab. 
I will get the vaccination because it's important that everyone gets the vaccination. Uh, we need as many people as possible to be vaccinated, otherwise it, it's not going to be as very effective. Other, yeah, it, it, it pretty much most people need to, it, need to be vaccinated for the thing to work properly. Okay, so yeah, I don't think there's really anything else we need to do in this room. I think we could probably call this room done. Uh, all the scripting I've already done for it. I didn't show that on stream, but it's all, all sorted and all ready to go. Uh, I'm just noticing the shadow we've got going on here. I'm wondering where that's coming from. There we go. I'm turning cast shadows off on that light there because we don't need cast shadows. It's the same with this. I don't think we need uh, shadow casting on that one either. So again, a performance optimization thing. That's better. <laughs> Hellboy says, sounds like it's time for a victory bacon. I agree, except I've got no bacon in the house. Oh, bacon yum. Just, it's so unhealthy. It's so unhealthy. Bacon, it's just, it's so tasty, but man, it's unhealthy. So much fat in it. But I do love it so much. Um, Nero says, I need to come off, I'll need to come off my other immunosuppressant meds to take any vaccine. Uh, that's going to be a roller coaster. Um, or well, just wait a few weeks after the vaccine's widely available to make sure it's all safe before you do anything anyway. That's my advice. Sniper Echo says, oh, sorry, Sniper Girl says uh, to Euro, wow, really? That sucks? It does. And Euro says, yeah, it is what it is, though. <laughs> uh, Sniper Girl says, think I'm an oddball? Not that, not that into bacon. I'm into steak, though. I love steak, too. I'm a real meat, meat man. I love meat. Whether it's bacon, steak, roast lamb, roast beef, I love it all. Um, let me just... Let, I'm seeing things, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I lo love me meat. Yes, no, very meat. Love my meat. I could never become vegetarian. I just love meat way too much. Way, way too much. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like vegetables too, uh, but I couldn't stop eating meat. I mean, you know, I come from Australia where, you know, we, we're we known for having cattle farms and lamb, you know, sheep and cows and farms and way too much meat manufacture goes on in Australia for me not to eat meat. It's like, uh, I guess, being from Texas maybe and not eating steak. Sacrilege. Uh, Sniper Girl says, I think, well, we all agree with you there. Uh, yeah. Could live without meat. I oh, couldn't, couldn't live without meat. Yeah, no, me either. Me loves the meat too much. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? We are going to do a save all, and then we're going to probably jump into 3D Studio Max, and we're going to start doing some UV mapping for the kitchen because we're done with the sitting room. Yay! Andrew Luss says, I like rice too much. I like rice too. I like, look, I love rice. I eat rice all the time. Um, I like a steamed rice. Love steamed rice. I, I don't like fried rice so much because, again, it's not really healthy. Um, but I love steamed rice and I eat huge amounts of rice. I put rice with every meal if, if I can. And it's cheap. I don't know, where, but in Australia anyway, buying rice is really cheap. So. So it's win-win. Taste, it's tasty and it's cheap. Um, Euro says, our main industry here is farming, livestock and crops. It's the same in Australia. That and mining, usually pretty much. Uh, Euro says, tourism was pretty big here, but that went down the crapper, uh, that went down the crapper everywhere this year. Well, again, yeah, Australia is really known for maybe four things. Tourism, livestock and, you know, agriculture, mining, and what's the other one? <laughs> Tourism, uh, education. Like uh, we get a lot of overseas students come here to go to, to go to our universities. So those four things. And yeah, tourism has completely died in this country because no one can fly anywhere. 
they were sort of stuck, stuck with just, and same with the education, because we can't have any international students flying in because everything's locked down. So yeah, agriculture and mining is pretty much it for, for Australia at the moment. Sniper Girl says, at least not yet. Uh, if when a veggie steak tastes as good as a real steak, I might become a vegetarian, but uh, that's not going to happen. I agree. I don't think it'll happen for a while either. Hellboy says, I've seen Mc, uh, McLeod's daughters. I can confirm. McLeod's daughters, sorry. I've seen McLeod's daughters. I can confirm Australia is basically drunk cattle farmers and scorching heat. <laughs> it's not like that. Yes, no, no, we don't have kangaroos hopping down the street. We don't have ka uh, koalas in every tree in our backyard. That's not the way it works. That, that's a myth. We don't throw a, a, a shrimp on every barbie we have either. And unlike what you might think in the United States, if you're familiar with Paul Hogan, he's not a good representation of what Australians are like. <laughs> he's a caricature, Paul Hogan of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef era. Yep, that's right. The Great Barrier Reef. It's beautiful. But we've got no tourists because um, all international flights are closed down. We even have, there's something like 30,000 Australian citizens that are stuck overseas and can't come back, fly back into Australia. Because anyone coming from overseas, you, you can only come into the country if you're a citizen because everything's locked down because of the human malware. But even if you do come into the country, you have to go into quarantine for, for 14 days, for two weeks. And they've only got so many places that they can quarantine people so they have to limit the amount of people that can fly back into the country so we've got about 30,000 Australians that are stranded overseas in these different countries that want to come home to Australia but can't so it's, it's, it's pretty bad uh, but we want to make sure that don't, things don't get out of control again because we're back to zero cases in Australia so they, they want to be really careful Uh, Sniper Girl says to Hellforge, <laughs> LOL, Hellforge says, how about, how about drop bears, bears, bears? I'm not familiar with that, Hellforge. Sniper Girl says, well, I honestly wish they blocked international flights here. Uh, why the hell can't the US take this shit as serious? I agree. Are you, you guys, oh, it's, it didn't help that, you know, your president didn't take it very seriously. Your, your old president, anyway. Wasn't it just like the flu? Didn't he say that it would magically disappear one day? I mean, that's well, I don't want to get into politics bashing or anything on my stream, but I mean, that was they were nonsense things that he was saying. It, it's worse than the flu. It's not just like the flu. It's not going to disappear like a miracle. It's only going to disappear if you take steps to make sure that people stay healthy and and safe. You can't just wish it away. It's not something that you can wish away. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Andrew Luss says the reason those Australians can't go home is because of the US uh, they're, they're all over the world though they're not just in the US they're in Europe they're everywhere some Australians in the UK that can't fly back because we don't have the rooms available to, to put them up for two weeks in quarantine it's, that's part of the problem as well here in Australia we've only got so many quarantine hotels as they call them that we can put people up in uh, which is bad because a lot of people you know we're coming up to Christmas now people want to see their family I mean they're stuck overseas it's, it's pretty bad Australian citizens stuck overseas and can't come back uh, Helford says a mix between Republicans and the American exceptionalism Smurf says uh Phil Yo President? Hey. <laughs> what you talking about, Smurfberry? Sniper Girl says to Android just yes, yeah, that's probably true. Sniper Girl says sounds about right. Nero says my cousins hit the jackpot jackpot when they were in New Zealand visiting their brother. Got an extra three weeks of vacation due to the disruption in March. <sighs> yeah, well New Zealand they have no cases either as well, so they're doing they're doing well too, but we have no cases in this country as well. Thank goodness, because in Melbourne where I live, it was getting quite bad there a couple of months ago. We were up to like a thousand cases a day, uh, but we're back to zero now, which is good. 
All right, so we have finished the sitting room. We've saved everything. Let's jump into Max and let's start doing some UV mapping now. We're going to start working on the kitchen. I'm, I'm seeing things. I'm sh oh, hang on. I'm just going to throw the B-Road back screen up, guys. I'll be back in two seconds, okay? Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, yeah, so we're going to start working on the kitchen, I think. I'm just going to wait for this live stream graphic to disappear. <laughs> um, Jade Kitchen Hyper Hoist says... <laughs> yes, yeah, nice. Four weeks holiday instead of... Four week holiday with seven weeks. That sounds cool, Euro. Helpwood says take four and keep the change. Uh, Smokeberry says uh, that refrigerator needs elaborate gold inlays. I stat. I agree. <laughs> it does need elaborate gold inlays. Uh, Euro says full seeing things. Coffee must be too strong. <laughs> uh, Helpwood says all not stirring up. Uh, Euro says honestly, when you have coffee that's loaded with caffeine, you can see stars. It's kind of neat. Alford says hallucinating due to lack of caffeine. I wish I could see stars, he says. All I see are hands shaking. <laughs> okay, so um, let me just sort of show you what's going on with this fridge. So we have the door separated from the interior. So pretty simple fridge. We've just got a couple of shelves going on and some shelves going on in the doorway. And we're going to start uh, texturing it up. And the, and the reason that the door is separate from the fridge is, of course, because we want the player to be able to open the fridge. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, Phil does just chat. Hey, come on, I've done some work this morning. I did quite a lot of work there. We finished the sitting room. Now we're working on the kitchen. The kitchen! Can you believe it? I'm going to be giving you your kitchen that you've all been screaming and whinging about for the last six months or longer. Um, Sniper Girl says more accurate than Spill Dust 3D. <laughs> We're going to start texturing this up now. So I'm going to start with the actual fridge itself. And we're going to send it over to Ryzen. Hellforge says, and now you're going on a break in a week. No, I'm, I'm two weeks. I'm, 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 I'm streaming until the middle of December. Uh, Hellforge says, Start on the kitchen and run away on vacation. <laughs> yes, in two weeks' time is uh, when I finish for the year. So, two more weeks. Next week and the week after, and then I'm on break until about the middle of January. Just in time for Cyberpunk, and I'm looking forward to playing that. I wants me. To, I wants to play me some Cyberpunk. Okay, let's start isolating and UV mapping, I guess. So yeah, I'm streaming next week and the week after. Then I'm off until about the middle of January. Happy girl says to help, uh, should I do a full silence? <laughs> you must tell me, because uh, I don't have my, um, oh, look, if you guys are going to do that, I don't have my my request screen open. I do now, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, help board says to sniper girl, please no, Phil is... Phil talking is the only thing keeping me sane right now. This bloody truck is doing my head in. Uh, Helpwood says, and I haven't even started on the UVs. Sniper Girl says uh, that Helpwood saved me. Okay, well, my requests are open now, so. Well, let's keep going here in UV mapping, shall we? And then we want this bit. And then we want this bit. Uh, 
And let's do the feet. I'm going to do them one by one just to be on the safe side. Just wondering if I can get a better result using one of the other tools. This one, and finally this one. Okay, let's have a look at the interior now. We're going to look at the shelf thingies. The things that hold the shelf up, you know what I mean. Rails, thank you, help. <laughs> thank you, Yuri, I guess. <laughs> the shelf rails. Oops, looks like I forgot two up here at the top. And now the shelves themselves, I guess. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm going to select all the pieces of the shell. We'll see how the program goes with trying to do an automated unwrap. It'll either do a, do a good job or wait. We will find out. Uh, let's try. Let's start at the beginning and work our way back. No, that one's not going to work. This one will probably work. So the kitchen's not going to be anything OTT over the top or anything. Um, we're going to have a fridge, we're going to have an oven, we're going to have kitchen benches of course. Um, I still haven't decided on the curtains for the kitchen and I haven't decided on the floor or the walls. So they're things that we're going to have to think about before when, when we actually start putting it together. So yeah, fridge, oven, uh, kitchen benches, two, two separate units. It's going to be a separate oven, separate fridge, of course. Uh, curtains for the main kitchen window. And then I've got to work out what design I want for the walls and for the floor, whether I want them to be tiled, wood. Yeah, I haven't worked that out yet. We'll tackle that when the time comes. Because I told you that the kitchen was causing me a, a lots of grief. It, it took me ages to try and work out exactly how I want, what way I wanted to go with the design of the kitchen, and I still am not one hundred percent there yet. Like I've got the uh, pieces designed, the fridge, the oven, the countertops, but the actual walls and floor, I haven't really worked out what I want to do there yet. But we can work on the other stuff and then we can tackle that problem when we have to put it all together. Okay, I don't think I've forgotten any, anything. I think everything is texted up. Uh, UV mapped anyway. 
Let's send that back to Max and then I'll do a repack. So I'm just going to isolate that piece. Oh, did I forget that? I bet, it looks like I, I bet I did forget those, you know. I bet I did. Mercury says kitchen, yes, kitchen, finally. Hellforge says still trying to iron out some of the detail uh, work on Hellforge. What have we posted here? Is this the uh, truck you've been working on, Hellforge? I want to have a look. That does look awesome. It looks really cool. Sorry if you didn't want me to show it on the stream. You should have told me. That is looking really cool. I love it. it looks great. I love the detail you got going on. Very nice work, Hellforge. Uh, you guys should check Hellforge out as well when he streams, because he streams on Twitch too. So, so check him out. Well, that's why you didn't post it on the Discord yet. It's a work in progress. Yeah, I was worried because you didn't post it on the Discord that uh, maybe you didn't want, want it to be shown. Uh, I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to collapse my stack here because I forgot to UV map those bits. So really quick, because I can't be bothered doing it by hand, I'm just going to detach these pieces. And I'm going to send just these pieces back to Ryzen. You guys should have told me I missed them. It's my fault, not yours. And we're going to UV map them. And send them back. And now we can reattach them to the rest of the fridge. And now we need to do a pack. So let's select everything and pack. Uh, I'm just going to throw a checker pattern down to double check my uh, pixel density. So we want a checker and we're going to make it tile, I don't know, let's go 30 by 30. Uh, Helpwood says it's all good. I wouldn't have posted it in chat if I didn't want it showed. Cool. Remember to save as well and copy. Yes, I will. Let me just check the textile density before we do that though. And I think our textile density is uh, is okay. It's a little bit off on the corner. Um, but generally it's not too bad. Because we're going to be using a metallic texture, I don't think because I don't, I don't think it'll be an issue, even though it's a little, like I said, it's a little off here on the corner. Which means we'll get a bit of stretching, but um, because it's a metallic texture, we're going to be using, like, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, what do they call it where it's painted metal with, like, a varnish on it? Uh, anyway, we'll work that out when we jump into, into Substance Painter, but it'll be fine. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I, th I think our textile density is all right. So we can get rid of that checker pattern and we can move to the door. Let's do a save, have a drink of coffee. Yura says, are those corners seams? Uh, the opposite side looked like it. Let's have a look. Let me... I don't think it'll be an issue, but just so we can see. Oh, let me open the UV editor. Snappy Girl says, not sure. I think painted metal is called painted metal. 
You know what I mean? It's like it's like a painted. It's like it's like it's it's you know a fridge. You look at your fridge and it say it's white. It's a painted metal, but it's got like a sheen to it. You know what I mean? It's like they like they varnish it or something. It's got that. Yeah, it's got like a sheen over it. Helpwood says, I'm glad that uh, I'm not the only one getting slapped to stream for being a smartass. Ceramic. I think it's ceramic. That's right, Euro. I think, I think it's called ceramic. I think ceramic is correct. Uh, there is a seam here. Which is here. Let me do that again. I don't know that we can actually stitch it. I think stitching it might be worse because we're going to lose. We may lose some textile density. Like the te we may, it may be worse for our texture packing. Uh, we can certainly have a look though. Let's have a look at. Oops! I always forget this little dialog box up in the corner. Yep. Hey, there we go. There we go. Uh, but I might just get it to repack just in case it changed anything. I don't think it did, but you never know. My fridge is steel. Oh, look, I, I, I really want one of those, um, like, silver fridges, those aluminum-looking fridge things, you know what I mean? I don't have one. I've got a white fridge. My fridge is very similar to this, but not quite as old. But same sort of fridge. But I'd really like one of those. Actually, I'd really like a black fridge. Yeah, black fridge. That'd be sweet. I want a black fridge. There we go. Uh, now we don't have that problem with the uh, UVs on the side. Just for you, Euro. Yeah, even though it, probably, it wouldn't have been a problem, you wouldn't have noticed it. This is the correct way to do it, so it's correctly done. Your fridge uh, Snappy Girl says, uh, you know me, would probably Pack that manually, my yes, I know what you're like. I know very well what you're like, Sniper Girl. Uh, let's, how are we going for time? Okay, let's, let's do a quick save. And let's send this door over to Ryzen. And let's start UV mapping it up. Hellboard says, I actually had an optim optimization question. Yeah, what is it? Euro says, uh, yeah, I just said about it because it looked like it stretched, but in reality, I knew it wasn't. <laughs> Hellboard, yeah, well, what's the optimization question, Hellboard? Uh, this will be interesting, this piece, because it's quite a weird shape. See how, how the program handles it. Uh, Euro says, with that being said, having a seam there isn't ideal. No, it's not. That's true. But it, it was going to be, it will be metal, so it wouldn't have been noticeable. But it's fixed now. The seam has been stitched. So we're good to go.
Uh, let's select the text. And then let's do the frame. It's not really a frame. I don't know what you'd call it, actually. The bit that goes around there. And that leaves the door. The door is actually broken up into a front and sides. So I might keep it that way. And then we have the sides. No. This is a really weird piece of geometry to try and UV map. Have the the seal, I guess you'd call it. And then we have the inner seal. Again, this is one of those pieces of geometry that's really fiddly to try and UV map. It's a weird shape. It's probably better. And then we've got the doors themselves, the shelves. So let's do that one. That one, and then that one, and then the, I don't know what you call these, the bits that sort of stop things from falling out off the shelf. Okay, and let's make sure I haven't forgotten anything and I'm wondering if I've forgotten. It should be, yeah, these little um, latches here at the side. Let's make sure we get those as well. Gasket Snapper says, uh, hang on, let me catch up here. That's true, Euro says, it depends on how it's used and how visible it is. Uh, also, alphas are expensive computational-wise, at least in game engines. Hellforge says, like a floor piece you, you'd you see in Aliens, for example, that's the style of uh, mesh floor in Unreal Engine. Gasket, that's that's it. Thank you, Smurfery. Uh, Euro says, if there's nothing under it, it could probably get away with just bump mapping it. And tiling the texture set in the case of Alien, in the case of aliens, the scenes are all very dark. What are we talking about? Uh, oh, my phone battery. Helpwood says, I was thinking about doing something underneath, but I'm not sure yet. Everything's still pretty much up in the air, which is uh, the downside of being your own art director. But it has its plus pluses as well. It's nice to be your own art director.
Uh, Helpwood says, the good part is I don't have to pay someone to yell at me. <laughs> if you're the art director, you do the yelling usually. No, not if you're a good art director, you don't yell. It's not how to get the best out of people by yelling at them. Uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of stitching here. So there, and where's the other one? Up here. And there. Okay, I think we've UV mapped that up, so we can send it back to Max. Help, oh, it says, uh, scroll up a bit. You missed my initial question. What was your initial question? Oh, hang, okay. If I, if I wanted to a metal, if I wanted a metal mesh grid floor, would the increase in geo, in geometry count, fifteen to one hundred thousand k tri count, be better than throwing down a material with transparent shader on it? Not sure how how hard dark materials tank in performance. Yeah, sorry. Okay, that's what you're talking about. Um, yeah, look. So you, you want a grid floor and you, you're saying just bake it with a material and not actually with like actual holes between the mesh, between the grids. You want to fake it with like an alpha map or something. That's the most efficient way to do it. You're not going to get nice shadowing though, but like if you've got a light source above the grate and you can see under the grate, like if, if, yeah, if, if there's an area underneath of the grate, and you've got a light source. If you're just using an alpha map, you're not going to get that nice shadowing happening of, of the grate under the grate. But unless that's the uh, unless you've got that problem, then I probably wouldn't. Um, I probably use an alpha map, particularly if it's going to be like a hundred thousand k. I mean, it depends on if it's a game engine. If it's a game engine, yeah, you want to be careful. But if it's only a rendering, then it doesn't really matter, and I'd, I'd, I'd actually do it in geometry. <laughs> Here it says, if you go down the model route you'll, uh, for your mesh grill, you could take advantage of instancing, that's true, and use that to save on draw calls. Yes, you can make it modular and instance it. That's a very good um, suggestion, which I, I hadn't thought of. Yep, that's, that's a great suggestion, Euro. And I'd probably do it in hardware and instance it because you'll get really nice lighting happening on it. Uh, I'm just going to um, pack the UVs on this. And I want to check. I'm just going to throw down that checker pattern again. So we can check our texel density. Yeah, that's fine. There's not much I can do about that seam we have running around the edge, unfortunately. But aside from that, our density is pretty even. Which says, please help. Hang on, what's going on? Yeah, that's the kind of that's kind of what I thought. Since I basically just have one mesh, even if it's on the high tri count side, and I can modify it with material to get extra details. Euro says, since you're a, you're an art director, you will have to weigh up the pros and cons of each and make a call on it. Euro says, do both and see how you like it. Then you can always swap them around. That's another good option. Sniper Girl says, honestly, thinking the instancing route that Euro recommended might be the best way to do it. I think so too. Hellford says, the only uh, executive decision I'm capable of making is when to get a cover. <sighs> uh, I'd instance it, uh, Hellford. I think, yeah, I, I'd, I'd do it in mesh and I'd instance the meshes. I think that'd be the best way to go. It'll, be, it, it'll look the best as well. You could do it in the material but it would look best actually as mesh and instance it and you won't have a, a, such a performance hit. 
let's save this now. Um, we're going to be keeping this as two separate textures because well, we don't have to. We could make it one. Mm. We might make mm. we might make it one. Oh, I'll think about that <laughs> next week. Uh, my brain's tired. And I got to saw back. <laughs> we did a save, which is good. We finished the sitting room, which is good. We're starting on the kitchen, which is good. So I think we might end it there for today, guys and girls. Uh, I do want to thank you, though, very much for being here, hanging out and watching with me. I will, of course, be back on Monday next week at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we will pick up where we left off here and we will keep working on the assets for the kitchen. Uh, I think uh, we, we'll either start texturing the fridge up or we'll keep UV mapping like maybe the uh, the oven or the kitchen cabinets. I haven't decided yet. <coughs> Pardon me. I'll decide next week when we're back on Monday. Um, I, I hope you guys uh, have a great weekend. Stay happy, healthy, safe. Make sure you wear a mask if you go outside. Try and avoid people if you possibly can. Um, you guys have a great weekend too. Again, you get some sleep, Hell Forge, as well. Have a nap. Thanks, guys, for hanging out and watching. I'll hopefully see you all again on Monday next week. <laughs> see you guys.